why the RTA and the other members weren't more flexible on the one change he was looking for to make this start rolling. Karen, bottom line right now, you will not see this on the November ballot until all these sides can get together and they've got one week to do it. All right, thank you very much. Sean Lay reporting live. Now to the major political news this afternoon. This is Hillary Clinton's big night as she prepares to close out the Democratic National Convention. As Steve Hanelsman tells us, everyone agrees Hillary Clinton needs to give the speech of her life tonight. It could be tough for Hillary Clinton to top last night an emotional President Obama passing her the baton to lead the party and they hope the nation in the opposite way, he said, than Donald Trump would. I'm asking you to join me to reject cynicism and reject fear and to summon what is best in us to elect Hillary Clinton as the next president of the United States. When it's her turn tonight, how can Clinton promise to finish what he started and also to shake things up? She has to hit the sweet spot on being able to say that, yes, I support most of President Obama's policies. I want to continue his agenda and improve on it, but also meet Americans who actually do want some change. As Katy Perry today checked out the stage and acoustics, three women delegates were already staked out in the second row to see the speech by the first woman to head a major party ticket. This woman has done something that no one has been able to do until now. And we should celebrate it and be totally enthusiastic. And you think she's going to celebrate it tonight? Absolutely. You That's why I'm to. here. <laughs> Another Clinton focus tonight is Donald Trump, who claimed today he was being sarcastic when he asked Russia for help to find Clinton emails. Hillary Clinton herself is in the spotlight tonight, hoping America finds her trustworthy and likable. Hillary Clinton admits she's not a great speaker or an easy campaigner, and so the pressure is on. I'm Steve Handelsman, NBC News at the DNC in Philadelphia. All right, thank you, Steve. Now to the Republican side today, Donald Trump's running mate, Indiana Governor Mike Pence, is visiting Michigan. Pence met with families and spoke at a town hall in Grand Rapids, and in just a few hours, he will be at a rally at the Suburban Show Place in Novi. Admission is free, but you do need to register for tickets, and there is a two-ticket limit per phone number. We have all the information on the politics page of ClickOnDetroit.com. The man charged in the death of 22-year-old Chelsea Brooke will undergo a competency exam. 27-year-old Daniel Clay was in court just a short time ago for a probable cause hearing. His attorney claims Clay has been distraught and that an expert should determine his mental state. A judge granted the request but added that it must be done quickly. Earlier this week, Clay told a judge that he did not want bond. He is facing second-degree murder charges. And a Washington Township man accused of abusing his six-month-old son is now facing charges. Today, Anthony Robinson was charged with first-degree child abuse. Earlier this week, the child's mother called 911. Robinson was left to watch his son for the day, but when the mother returned home, the child looked very sick. Doctors say the child had injuries consistent with shaken baby syndrome. Robinson is now being held on a $1 million bond. Some disappointing news from Ford Motor Company today with the company's latest earnings report falling below Wall Street expectations. The company just announcing its second quarter earnings are down 9% with vehicle sales slowing in both the U.S. and China. So let's take a look at how the markets closed today. As you can see, the major indexes were mostly uh, Dow Jones was down, NASDAQ up, and S&P 500 was up. First at four, we're on top of stories making headlines all around the world on your Thursday afternoon. In Afghanistan, five U.S. soldiers were injured in an attack against ISIS. An army general says the incident happened in an eastern province of the country and that all of the soldiers are expected to be okay. This comes as U.S. forces are fighting to drive out ISIS from areas in Afghanistan and Syria. New video released shows an airstrike in northern Syria earlier this month on a vehicle vehicle suspected to be used by ISIS militants. Pope Francis suffered a fall during an outdoor mass in Poland today. 79-year-old Pontiff appeared to trip on a step before tumbling to the ground. Clergy members rushed to his aid to help him back up. Fortunately, he wasn't seriously injured. The Pontiff is making his first visit ever to Eastern Europe with a five-day trip to Poland for World Youth Day, a global gathering of young Catholics.
Head first to four, we have got an orange barrel alert for you. Find out which local highway is closing down this weekend for a major construction project. Hi, Doc. Hey, Karen. Just how much exercise does it really take to counteract eight hours of sitting? The numbers just might surprise you. Get your catcher's mitts ready. It's time for a little ball, softball and baseball. We'll take you to the Tigers' hometown camp coming up. What you don't coming up all new on Local 4 News at 5 and 6. When a grandfather heard someone rifling through some video games in the middle of the night, he thought it was his grandson. But trust me when I tell you, the man on the ground here was not 10 years old. And this isn't the only house broken into the story on Local 4. Starting today, hundreds of local girls and boys are taking part in the Tigers Hometown Championship. Yeah, it's a special tournament that's hosted by the Tigers to help encourage more local kids to play ball. Our Tim Pamplin introduces us to the softball and baseball stars of tomorrow. Here at U of D Mercy Softball Diamond, some young girls warming up, going through the paces as part of the 21st Annual Detroit Tigers Foundation Hometown Championship. It's a chance for high school students to get to meet some of the faculty and current students to learn about playing softball at college. She's got it. I mean, she loves it. She's played 60 games this year and she's still going, so it's a positive thing. You guys excited to be here? Yeah. Yes. Being part of a team is definitely important because, you know, it gives them, you know, some leadership skills and camaraderie amongst their peers. The camp runs all weekend at various locations around town, culminating in a championship playoff game down at Comerica Park. So from softball at University of Detroit, we zipped our way from the west side all the way to the east side, Martin Luther King High School along Lafayette Boulevard. And the young men are hard at work. It's not just parents watching on, it's also coaches and scouts. That's George Contos from Schoolcraft College. He came here last year. We like what we've seen and we come back today and just see if we can see some uh, uh, some high school kids that are uh, uh, interested in going on to the next level to play some college baseball. Parents tell me this is an important part of raising their children. Get them involved in sports and activities. It's character building, builds leadership skills, and the youngsters are out there having fun, keeping fit, and looking forward. That's the scene right now at Martin Luther King High School. Tim Pamplin, Local 4. What a great event and really some good weather for the folks. I mean, it wasn't, the sun was out, but it wasn't just yeah. horrible. Like I mean, those kids days. don't have lawns. They don't have to worry about that exactly. stuff. It's dry for them they to play ball. They just want to play ball. Yeah, uh, but the rest of us uh, are going to be worried about that rain. And yet again, it looks like uh, we're coming up zilch on the rainfall front. Uh, but as far as those temperatures go out there, we're at 87 right now at Metro Airport, 83 at City, and a lot of 80s temperatures not far from each other until you get up towards Lake Huron, just slightly cooler up there. A little bit of a difference today. There's enough humidity that the heat index is slightly higher than the air temperature, but not by much. Feels more like 89 out there. Winds are coming out of the northeast at 7. That's helping us as far as the cooler breeze, but it's not helping the rainfall chances, and we'll explain that in a second. Beautiful ch uh, shot from Storm Pins. Kathy sent us uh, looking up at the uh, lake up in Jetto. So appreciate that. We've been watching a tease on the radar. Showers across the northern part of the state fell apart. There's some more that are starting to form right here on the uh, lake shore of Lake Michigan. Those will probably not survive the trip as they just meander very slowly to the east. So we still have a chance that it could get a couple storms popping up here over our uh, portion of the state. But as we told you at the top of the show, the chance isn't good. And if we do see them, most of us are going to miss out. Anything that shows up should fade as we get closer to sunset. We will be mostly cloudy overnight. Temperatures will be in the 60s. And then tomorrow, again, there's a chance we could get a shower or storm. It's not great. But when we get into Saturday, there's going to be a wave starting to move in from the west. It could give us a little bit better chance of seeing a shower or storm. It's not going to be a given for anybody, but it's our best chance and really it's the best shot that we've got in the upcoming seven to 10 days. So 66 tonight scattered evening storms coming to an end if they show up at all. Uh, we will be seeing the uh, calm conditions as we get later into the nighttime hours. Slightly cooler tomorrow. We're only calling for a high of 80 degrees. And again, there's that shot. The thunderstorm doesn't look all that great. Temperatures start ramping up though as we get into the end of the weekend and especially to next week. There comes the 90s and the humidity's coming with it. So thunderstorm chances will be returning middle of next week, maybe a little bit better. 
But so far, it's going to be a whole lot of dryness between now and Tuesday if we don't get those storms in the next couple of days. Karen. All right, thank you, Ben. And good health. The e-cigarettes are due to come under FDA regulation in two weeks. And Dr. McGeorge is here with news about the potential health mm -hmm. effects they have. That's right, Karen. You know, a new study, to no one's great surprise, finds that e-cigarettes produce potentially harmful chemicals at various levels. But there were a couple things that popped out. First, two of the most common chemical ingredients, that's propylene glycol and glycerin, contribute to the production of toxic chemicals like formaldehyde. And second, as the device is actually warmed up, the production of the toxins increase, so later puffs are potentially more harmful. And I know you're working on another story about sitting yeah. and how long it takes to make up for that. Because I know lots of folks have a desk job and you can be exactly. sitting anywhere from eight to 10 hours a day. Right, it may not necessarily be your fault. You know, depending on the type of work you do, the length of your they commute and your overall activity level, sitting for eight hours a day really is not uncommon. But new research from the UK suggests one hour of exercise a day may be enough to eliminate the effects that sitting has. And even moderate activity like biking or brisk walking qualifies. Now, unfortunately, it turned out in the study, only 25% of participants actually did an hour or more of physical activity every day. So it's not necessarily a lot of time, but a lot of people aren't doing it. So you're saying you'd need a full hour, though, to make up for eight hours of sitting. Correct. Okay. But, you know, it's an hour of moderate activity. Right. It's, it's not, not like you're heavy lifting. Crazy. Exactly. And you don't necessarily have to do it all in one day. You can do it over a period of days. Well, sometimes I'll do, I'll like set my alarm on my phone if I know, you know what I mean? It's right. like, okay, exactly. too much time has passed. Just get up and start moving. Exactly. That because... hourly reminder to yeah. get your butt up. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it, Doc. Ahead, first of four, are Chelsea Clinton and Ivanka Trump actually friends? You know Ivanka Trump, right? Would you consider her a friend? Absolutely. But can their friendship survive the campaign? Also coming up, first at four for years, Amazon has been saying they want to use drones to deliver packages. Most people thought they were kidding, but now that joke is becoming a reality.